Hello, this is Tina Tiainen and you're watching Tina Tiainen Television. Today we have this beehive back here. It's called an aviary. This is on my farm in the very back here. And uh, this is the beekeeper, Paul. And we are checking out these hives right now and educating small children about the wonders of bees. Let's go. So now we're in the back of the field and we've driven out here and we're going to check out the bees. Then we're going to don bee suits and get a closer look at these creatures. This is a bee suit I'm going to wear. Apparently not all beekeepers will wear one because they don't mind being stung, but we are going to wear them for safety today. So this is actually a children's one. I'm going to try fitting in this and see if it works. <laughs> Oh, and it does. There <laughs> we go. Start over here. We're gonna check these guys out. <laughs> All right. So this is actually a new queen colony that I made up a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. where there's a new queen. Ooh, puff the smoke. Now that's a blank frame, that's just foundation, where they haven't drawn out any wax yet. That's a plastic foundation. There's a little bit of honey here. But that's old honey, I think, that they didn't even make. This should be where the action is. That is a beautiful frame of brood. Those are baby bees. Look, bees are in these little cocoons, these cells capped with a little paper capping. And there's baby bees developing inside. Inside of some of these cells with like little white grubs, little like wormy looking things. It's a larval larva state. So right now we're checking out one of the smaller ones here and we're looking for the queen bee. Let's have a look. Oh, there's found the queen. Right, so she is right there, the big oh. one. See so her crawling around? That's the queen. That's her. She's a good queen. She's laying a lot of eggs. Girl. Big, big girl, queen bee right now. The queen is down in these two boxes. It's where she's raising her brood and where they're making bee bread and raising bees. I put this queen excluder in because mm -hmm. these supers, that's what I'm going to harvest and I don't want her laying eggs up in here because mm -hmm. it makes it messy when I harvest. So this plastic excluder keeps her in the bottom. I'm going to show you a frame of honey. Now there's a gooey substance right here. Mm -hmm. It's all over the inside of the hive. It's this gooey, uh, pasty stuff. It's called propolis. Mm -hmm. And that's what bees use. They make it out of oh, a mixture of like nectar and sap and who knows what. Mm -hmm. And they use that to plug up holes and to clean the hive. So that's honey, but that's very, this hive's making very dark honey. They get better light on it, but that frame's not full. Let's find a full frame. That's pretty full, not 100%. It's capped off nice, and this is very dark honey. The difference right there. You wanna try? Linda? Is it good? Fresh out of the honeycomb. Poke your finger in. Yep, just push it right in. Oh, look at that. Oh my. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Bees knees. Oh, do you want to see how I get the honey out? Yes, please. Now that's an old frame. I, we wouldn't want that honey, but let's pretend this is a nice fresh frame of honey. The bees will put wax over the, over the cells. And so that's what keeps the honey inside. This one's dripping a little bit and it's getting kind of old, but it's still good bee food. If I ever use this, when I use this frame again someday, the bees will eat it. What I do is I have this thing here called a hot knife. I plug it in and it gets hot. So hot it would, it would burn you if you touched it. 
But what this does is this melts the wax. So I'll take this and I'll run it right over the top and it will uncap. It'll cut the cap off of all those cells so that now the honey can come out. I'll spin it around, I'll, I'll uncap that side. Then I'll take this frame and I'll slide it down in there. Better get another one or it's going to be too unbalanced. Oh, that's a nice heavy one. Set it up, take my hot knife, cut the cappings off both sides. And that's not a good example because that's old honey. So we wouldn't want to eat this honey. Then, when you spin it, the honey will fly out and land against the wall of this extractor. All right, that's fast enough. Oh, look, some spinning out. <laughs> oh, really? See, there's some looking out. But it's not uncapped, so that's fast enough. Oh, hey, I have some samples, though. Do you guys want to taste some honey? Yeah. Reach in this bag, pull out a piece of bread. Sit on that cutting board. Welcome to this is freshly extracted this a few weeks ago. Is that enough for you, Michael? No. No? I like them. Alright, there. They got lots. Did you like some? When you grab the honey, how many times have to clean the honey uh, extractor? The extractor, yeah. Um, well, I'll, 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 I'll uncap those frames, I'll put them in the extractor, and I'll, it'll spin for... My new extractor is, is motorized, so I can just hit run, it'll spin for maybe 10 minutes while I uncap another six frames. So... And once a season? Oh, oh, how many times do I harvest? That's a good question. Usually once a season, so like 1st of September. Now, I did harvest once earlier this year because I was running out of boxes. The bees were running out of space to put honey. So I pulled off five boxes and I extracted it and I put those five empty boxes back out there. And they're not really filling them up yet. Um, then they probably won't. So I probably have another 10 boxes of honey out there. Awesome. 1st of September. And what I was talking about in the truck earlier, um, so like your store-bought honey, to, to make it have... Uh, I won't say shelf life because honey at the right moisture will last uh, forever in theory, but it'll crystallize. Raw honey will crystallize, and so typically, if it's store bought honey, they'll they'll uh, filter it through a very fine filter to get the pollen grains and and out of it, and that keeps it more stable. And I've even read that they might heat it up to maybe 100. I, maybe 150, 160 degrees and then cool it back down, but that heating action will help the honey be more stable also. So I don't do that. I run mine through a coarse filter that might get out like a bee's wing or a chunk of wax, but it'll keep all the pollen grains in there and then I won't heat my honey, but that means it will crystallize more readily. So if you take the jug and put it in your pantry, it, it might crystallize. Some honey will crystallize very fast. Some honey will keep uh, for quite a long time without crystallizing, but it probably will crystallize. In that case, um, you wouldn't want to microwave it because it doesn't heat it evenly. You put a, uh, you put the jug in a pot of um, warm water at maybe 150 degrees, and that'll that'll melt the crystallized honey. Now, how did you get into beekeeping? When I was a kid, my father had bees, and he wasn't a very good beekeeper. Uh, they died a few. He tried for a few different years, and um, they all died and he kind of gave up, but I just remember that and so uh, I moved to Iowa about seven years ago and I went to the Clay County Fair and the beekeeping club there had a display and I thought, hey, that'd be cool, I'd, I'd like to keep bees. So I went, joined the club, went to some meetings and took the plunge, bought a, bought a couple beehives and um, bought some bees and started keeping bees and that was about four years ago. Okay. Bees are are, an, are poll pollinators. Pollinators are very important uh, agriculturally and then just in the natural environment are very important. So, um, you know, for me, I just, I was fascinated by bees and um, I'm, I'm passionate about it. So I get out opening the hive, working with bees and I just, I mean, I could do it for hours. Uh, it's just a lot of fun to pull the frames out, see the bees working. And 
To be a successful beekeeper, you have to be passionate about it because there's a lot of problems you'll see in the hive. Maybe the hive won't have a queen. Maybe have a, a lot of raw mites, which is a parasitic mite. That's kind of the main problem we have with bees right now is this, this parasitic mite. You might see a high mite population. You might see, um, you know, other like a hive beetle or disease or things going on. And when you see that, you have to take action. So you can't be a casual beekeeper. You have to be uh, proactive and spend time. Uh, working the bees and reading about it and trying to understand and that's I guess what excites me too is there's a lot that I still need to learn. Uh, I do a lot of reading um, but there's still a lot that I'm trying to learn. So what about your honey? Like you sell honey and how much is it and kind of... Um, yeah I do. It's very much a hobby so it's not really a business. I just um, I, I get anywhere from 15 to 30 gallons in a year and then um, we have a webpage, uh, Nelson Local Honey, uh, on Facebook, so if you just Google Nelson's Local Honey, or excuse me, Nelson's Honey, on Facebook, you'll we'll find it there, but uh, just a bear is like four bucks, or two pounders for nine dollars, you can buy bigger sizes, but really, I, prices are pretty reasonable, because I'm not in it for the money, just enough to fund the hobby, you know. Um, so how many bees are there currently back there, and is it like one queen per stack? Or? Yep, each colony will have one queen, it is possible for hive to have two queens in the spring but it's, it's not common but usually you'll have um, uh, one queen most often one queen and anywhere from 30 to 60 thousand worker bees in the in the middle of the summer and or in, in the in the this time of year when the colony is really strong actually we're getting into the fall so colony populations start to drop as the bees are getting ready for winter they don't want to overwinter 60 thousand bees and so the queen will slow down in laying eggs population will drop and they'll focus more on bringing in honey because mm -hmm. where the queen's laying eggs in the in the brood um, cells that's uh, they'll now want to use that space to, to store honey to get ready for winter time but mm -hmm. this time of year maybe 30 to 50 thousand bees in a strong hive. Mm -hmm. How many are back so, there you think? I've got um, six or seven colonies. Uh, one colony is very small maybe only two or three thousand bees that's where I'm just rearing a new queen um, and then uh, that real tall colony I bet 50 60 thousand bees very strong colony so mm -hmm. it's already produced about 12 gallons of honey for me off that one colony I have six more boxes out there and some of them are full some of them are half full so that might be another 12 15 gallons of honey off that one what would like the total combined number uh, last year I got 30 gallons um, this year I might have about 30 gallons again okay. so that's pretty good, pretty yeah. good harvest what about for like uh, the actual bee population how many would you guess would be out there right now I gosh I just I don't know I mean let's say six hives times 50,000 bees mm -hmm. so 300,000 bees maybe Woo! So, it's a lot of bees yeah we're doing good work out here Paul yeah <laughs> <laughs> very good It'll... thank you guys for watching I hope you learned something today this is Tina and that's Paul and uh, bye.